Hey guys, Bruce here, Vintage Drum Restoration Garage, and I've got one here today that's going to make you cringe. I really think so. So, put your seat belts on, and um, I'm going to take you for a ride that I wouldn't recommend too many of you take, because this is a uh, delicate surgery. So, fasten your seat belts. And here we go. Welcome to another edition of Vintage Drum Restoration Garage. And we've got an interesting here one here today. It looks like to be a uh, probably late 40s Slingerland Radio King solid maple shell that is uh, out around by a quarter of an inch. This is the widest spot here. It's 14 and 3 16 And so this spot would here would be 13 and 7 8 So it's out by almost 5 16 You can't get any heads on here other than calf heads. And um, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to take this drum completely apart and what I've done in the past I've soaked the rings out of them um, so I'll probably attempt to put this drum submerged in water up to about just past the rear ring soak it out of here and then let the shell dry and we're going to reinstall the rear ring. So that the shell is completely in round as we install it. So let me take this drum apart and we'll get to it. Okay, now I've disassembled this drum. And let me show you what we're up against here. Um, This is the end of the this is the end of the rear ring here. Sorry about that. Fix the camera a little better. This right here is the end of the rear ring. They started gluing it here and went around. And as you can see it's separating here. There's a little crack there. And then look at it separating all the way around here. Ends here and then it starts up again here. So this ring probably won't be too bad to take out of here. This is a really nice thick shell. Which I noticed most of the early 50s, late 40s, on up into the mid 50s shells are a quarter of an inch maybe five sixteenths in places the really nice thick shells are beautiful and with this drum being this far out um it's really of no well it's not well it's not really of any use uh because it won't fit modern heads and most people don't want uh, calf heads. I, I like them, but I don't want to be stuck with that. So I've taken a piece of tape and put a arrow on both sides of the drum. And I put the, the widest point. So right here at this arrow, all the way over to this arrow here is the widest point. So that way we know when this drum goes back together where the widest point are and we know what to do to squeeze it and get it back so what i'm going to do is i'm going to find something right now to put this in submerge it in water and i'll show you what i'm going to do i found a oil drain pan that this fits in here and i'm going to put water in it 
not quite to the top of the rear end. Don't forget this uh, this glue on this drum is animal glue. So the the water will uh, basically make it uh, porous and the bond will fail. And that's what we want. So um, I'm going to let this thing soak for a few hours and I'll, I'll bring you back. Okay, uh, we're back at it. Um, I've let this shell soak overnight and um, I've had it out of the water this early this morning to see if it was if the bond had broken and it really hadn't too much. Let me wipe this out down a little bit. But I was able to get the bond to break in this area, which is where you really want to start. This is the lap joint. So I'm starting, as you can see, it's moving now. That lap joint is starting to move. And I want to make one thing clear. I had a guy message me um, the other day about, I guess, a drum that I had worked on some time ago. I think it was, um, I can't remember the snare drum, but he was said uh, something about how I repaired it and then why didn't you glue the cracks up here are the separations here right right and i just want to tell you why i don't do that guys and why it doesn't work because when when these things separate here like that and you try to glue them back up against the shell it doesn't it doesn't glue back together it won't stay um because the re-ring wants to do one thing and the shell wants to do another. And so really the best way to do it is to do what I'm doing is to remove the re-ring. In this case is what we're doing, removing it. And then putting it back in there and gluing it back together to where, you know, it'll uh, take up the slack um, because you can't move this lap joint if you're gluing down here in this area. It just won't pull the whole thing back. Um, so, I, I don't know. Hopefully that's clear enough. If you're going to try to glue these back together without taking the rear ring out, best way for me, may not be for others, is to just go ahead and put glue in the crack itself and fill it up with glue. I mean, that's the easiest way to do it. In this situation, this drum is out around, so it's of no use to, well, 99% of people who don't use calf heads. I tried a, a modern vintage aquarium head on it. It wasn't going on it. No way, no how. It was just egg-shaped. It's out 5 sixteenths of an inch. So, you know, if we can't get this thing back and round, which I think we can, but we'll, we're trying, then basically we're going to just have to call it, uh, call it good. And, um, but we're not going to talk about that right now. So um, I'm going to put this drum in my trusty uh, vice here, or not vice, but... Uh, clamp and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. I want to adhere this thing in here really good so it won't move. Then I'm going to take this uh, 
take this, uh, hopefully you can see that. Let me, uh, I'll bring you in a little closer there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the knife in, in the crack here and I'm going to start separating it just like this all the way down. You can hear, you can see it moving. We're just going to remove this ring out of here. You can see it. You can see it moving out of there. Hopefully you can see that. I'm just going to change the position here. Clamp it down real good. And just continue to go around it. Okay, so we've got it out about a little more than probably about two thirds. We've got it un. We've broken the bond, is what we're saying here, and it's coming out real easy. Because we've let it soak all night. Now we're going to take this out of here and have a look at it. I really don't want to remove this ring out of here completely. As you can see, we are... This right here is the end of the lap joint here so we've got about and here's that crack here so we want to be careful around that so i really probably want to go only about up to here and leave that in there leave that ring in adhered and start gluing it back in place with it being adhered in this area. Why take it all the way out? There's no real reason. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fasten it back down in there. And just go up about six more inches. I gotta be real careful around this crack here. I don't want to split the uh, rear ring. I want you guys to see that. Yeah, it's okay. I made it past that. Great. It's actually pretty good. I think I'm going to live with that the way it is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually let the shell dry. Not completely. I want it still moist. I want everything to be able to bend. If you let all this dry, this rear ring could crack or you could have cracks in the shell or whatever. I want it to be pliable, but I don't want it to be wet, wet, wet like it is. So I'm going to let it dry a bit for a few hours. Then I'm going to come back and show you what we're going to do next. Start gluing it back in. All right. 
I just want to let you know um, this rear ring is separated out of here. Uh, you know, we've got the last six inches or let's say six inches still adhered to the shell. I want to leave that in, but I want to clean all this this area up in here where it's going to be glued and the ring itself. We don't want any of that old glue on there. And this is the best time to clean it because it's wet. So I'm going to get all this old stuff off of here. All this old animal glue. And then clean it up real good. That way when we put our new glue on there, it's going to dry real nice and give a good bond. And you'll notice I'm using this butter knife with these teeth on it. And that's actually given some a, a, a little bit of a score inside here. And that'll help the bond of the glue. You don't have to get every bit of it off, but it'll help. The more you get off, the better. Just don't want anything loose on there to mess with your bond. And then here's right here where is where the. Uh, here, well, I guess you guys can't see. Sorry about that. Let me move the camera. Um, here's where the lap starts and ends right about here. So I'll clean that up. I want to make this thing clean so when I put this back together, it doesn't look like it's ever been apart. And I want to salvage this drum. It's just a shame that it's come apart like this. But so, so many of these drums do that, especially Slingerland Radio Kings. They just didn't... Uh, I think that was just production um, at the time. They were just building so many of them, they just threw them together. Um, I love their drums, but the craftsmanship was pretty slapdash. What I'll do is I'll, I'll go ahead and let this stuff dry up a little bit. And when I'm ready to start gluing, this will still be semi-wet, but I'll, I'll give it a sand. Try to get some of this stuff off of here. I'm just getting the heavy stuff off right now. I'm going to put it out, the, out, in the, out in the sun a little bit. Okay, so that's a lot of that. I'm going to put it out in the sun and... Um, I'll come back at you when I think it's ready to start working on. Okay, guys, what I've decided to do is take the ring completely out. Let me tell you why. I'm not so sure this shell is ever going to be salvageable. Um, because, well, here's the problem. It's from here to here, it's 14 and... Oops. 14 darn near 5 sixteenths. So even if you split that and egg shaped it, you'd still be right around 14 and an eighth. So what do we do for that? Because um, look at I'm down here at 13 and 7 eighths, you know, at the other cross point. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to egg shape this, uh, take the egg shape out, I'll bring the clamp in actually a little more than I need to. That way it has a chance to spring back a little bit. And what probably will have to happen with the shell that's even going to be salvageable is, uh, I hate to say this, but we'll probably have to lose the white marine pearl and... Um, 
either that or maybe cut a dado cut around the outside here so the head fits i mean either way it's it's a not a drum that i would own wouldn't be part of my collection but for a player i guess it'd be okay you know so i'm just going to do this for instructional purposes because i think the shell is you know, i don't know it's beyond my capabilities you know the other thing i was thinking is completely take the shell apart take the other ring out let the sh so, uh, shell soak and break apart the lap joint here all the way across where the shell is separated from this piece to this piece where it laps and bring it in and the problem with that is you'd have you know the holes would be different on one of the lugs it'd bring it in <laughs> so oh i don't know it's just quite a shame really the whole thing is just a it's a mess but we'll continue on just for instructional purposes and we'll go ahead and put this shell together and you know no promises here so when i said you were going to cringe at the beginning of this video you're cringing now all right i'll be right back okay so what i'm going to show you what i'm doing here i've already got the glue on this side of it but i just thought i'd let you know how i'm doing this i'm just putting a bead of glue around the edge here the inside and i'm going to smear it around with the knife and i'll do the same thing with the uh, the rear ring yeah i'd like to say that we can save this drum but um it just i don't know it's probably only made for calfskin heads Maybe that's the way it should stay. I don't know. I guess. Okay, so I'm, uh, I'm putting this glue on this uh, rear ring here. And... Uh, Put a nice coat of that all the way around. Both surfaces get a good coat of glue. Then I'll bring you back when uh, I'm ready to start clamping. So look at I've got the uh, the ring bent back in there, um, just roughly, and I'm going to clamp I'm going to clamp some of it right away. What, let me show you what I did here. Originally, the ring started here, you know, the end of the rear ring. The scarf joint went like this around the shell. So I've turned it a quarter of an inch and moved it and started it here. I, not a quarter of an inch, quarter of a turn, sorry. And I started it here. Why did I do that? Because... the rear ring is pushing on the shell 
um, and making it bow out towards the way I don't want it to. Um, I hope I'm being clear. The, the rear ring is bowing it out that way. And so I've turned it towards bowing it this way. I hope that explains it. So I'm going to use these um, plastic strips I've got. And I'm going to start right here. I get a clamp on here. Put another one on the inside. Just want to get it started because this is kind of a headache. This is where the work starts. Um, once you get started, it's not so bad, but getting it going, putting these rings back in is kind of a, a little bit of a chore. I don't know if you've ever done it, but that's the purpose of this video is to show you how I'll show you how I do it anyway. And then uh, you want to get these this to meet right here at the edge to where there is not it's not up or down. Right now I think it's gonna be it's up a little bit. I'm just gonna bang it down a little bit. And you just have to keep wiping glue off as you go. And then you just want to stagger these uh, clamps. That way they're not getting in the way of each other as you clamp. In other words, the handles stagger. Let's get this thing to where it's lining up okay. And I'll have to take that off again when I get around here. But just to get started, And I'm just going to carry on like that all, all the way around. It's hard to have this camera right next to me while I'm working. So, um... I'll probably shut you down here in a minute. And once I get so far, I'm going to have to uh, 
put the long clamp on and um, cause the widest point is right here, right where I'm clamping. So I'm going to put clamp right about here that way I can still get that other clamp in there that long one to get the egg shape out of the shell So what I do is I put this block under here. Let's see. And then I'm just going to put this here and bring the shell in and try to work around it. have a measure on it. 14 and an eighth. I'm going to bring it in a little more. That way when it springs it gives a little bit. Okay. Be back. Okay, there you have it. Um, kind of a complex little uh, project. But, um, and it may be a, a lesson in futility, but it'll give you an idea of what's involved putting a re-ring in and getting it to uh, glue up properly in the shell. Um, all this top layer glue will be easily scraped out. Like I said, I don't know if this is going to be salvageable, the shell. But I just thought this would be a good candidate to uh, just give you an idea of what's involved in putting a re-ring in. And to do it, um, and to soak them out too. So um, I'm going to let this sit in the sun for the rest of the afternoon. And then also um, let it dry overnight indoors. I'll bring you back when I uh, have some news. Okay, so it's been uh, 24 hours this thing has been in these clamps. And I'll tell you right now, I don't expect this to be um, even close to what I would hope for. So, uh, like I said earlier, this is more of an instructional video on how to do this. But uh, this shell is oversized. Very little you can do about that other than, like I mentioned before, uh, data wing the outside or, you know, there's a few other ways. But let's just see how we did. Let's take all these clamps off real quick and uh, see what happened here. I don't have a whole lot of expectations here.
Oh, these strips are on here. These plastic strips are on here to keep the clamp from digging into the shell. And they work really good. You can use wooden blocks too. Right, let's see what we got here. Let's see if we even came close to a, uh, putting this thing back in shape. Okay, so this is the widest spot here. Yeah, I don't think we were successful. I mean, it helped a little bit. 14 and 8 here. 14 and 3 sixteenths. I think we brought this thing in about probably an eighth. Okay, so you know, I'm going to um, end this video here. Um, I'll show you how it turned out here. As you can see, all the seams are real tight. There's no openings all the way around. You know, just that little spot there, that can be uh, a little bit of glue. So, you know, um, did we help it, this project? Yeah, we did. Um, you know, we're at 14 and 1 16th here, which you'd hope the whole thing was going to be like that. But over here, we're at 14 and an eighth. So don't forget, we were at 14 and 5 16 before. And the most we have, so we brought it in a good eighth of an inch. Is that enough? Well, um, don't forget the thing is just oversized. So um, there's nothing really you can do about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask everybody to chip in. This uh, finish on that drum is, it's nothing great. It's pretty faded, um, pretty yellowed. Pretty nasty. No holes in the drum, but just in general, there's even a little tear there in the in the pearl there. So I'm going to ask everyone's opinion because there's really nothing you can do with this shell the way it is. Um, I'm going to ask everyone to ch chime in and say what you would do. Would you take the white marine pearl off and? maybe sand the shell around and kind of egg shape it a little bit so you can get heads on it on both sides. And I've done that before and it works really well. Uh, and then at least you've got a drum that's going to be usable. Or would you just leave the drum alone? Um, I haven't done anything to the other side. It's not as far out as this side, this one's like at 14 and across the other way is like 14 and an eighth. So kind of the same deal. Um, you know, I'm tempted to just take the white marine pearl off and go ahead and reshape the contour of the shell like down a little bit. Not much, just enough uh, to get the heads to be able to seat on there all the way around, you know, give it a little bit of a contour. And I've done that with other drums and it, it works pretty well. Um, like I say, this drum is, it is what it is. So I could either leave it alone or we could do that. I'm pretty against uh, datoing the, the drum, uh, let's say three quarters of an inch away from the edge, datoing it and just so the heads will ride. I, I really don't like that look. I'd almost rather see a wood grain finish on it with the shell just contoured down. And then it's a usable drum.
So I would uh, appreciate your take on this and uh, I'll take it all into consideration what you say. And until the next time we meet, I want you all guys to, uh, you know, hit that like button. Um, if you can do that for me, I'd appreciate it. I keep asking people to do that. I mean, I, I just am not getting enough of that. I mean, you watch the videos. You're not paying for anything here. So just at least help me out a little bit, if because that can help with the algorithms. Anyway, uh, and then um, subscribe. Get your buddies to join up. And we're, we're constantly getting new subscribers. And, um, you know, I appreciate that. So I want to keep this thing going, but I need a little bit of help from the audience. All right, guys. Um, until then, I'll talk to you later. Thanks for visiting with me at the Vintage Drum Restoration Garage.